Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I will excuse the mess, but what you're looking at right now is the amplifier I use for my computer. And this thing is really just, well, while it does work, one channel keeps cutting out and coming back and cutting out and coming back. I'll just be listening to something and all of a sudden the right speaker will go out. So I turn the volume up and the right speaker suddenly comes back on and I turn the volume back down. It keeps doing that so, you know, this tape recorder that I'm using as the amplifier, I think it's on its last legs. That's what I've traced the problem down to. So I'm going to make an amplifier to replace this. It's not going to be an ultra-powerful amplifier or anything like that. It's only going to be like one or two watts per channel, but that's all I'm going to need for this room. So, let's get started. I think the first thing I'm going to do is show you how and how not to make a split rail power supply. What is a dual rail power supply or split rail power supply? Well, it's a power supply that has three outputs, one of them being a ground, one of them being positive voltage, and one of them being negative voltage. And don't worry if that sounds confusing because I'm going to explain what that all means. Let's try to demonstrate this with a couple of batteries and a meter. Now these are quite depleted so they're not up to their full 9 volts but it should still be good enough for this demonstration. So if I measure across one of the batteries we have okay, 8.84 volts Let's measure the other one. 8.65 volts. Now if I put them together like this, so they're connected together, we now basically have a split rail power supply. Where the two batteries are joined, that's our ground. Where the positive terminal is, that's our positive voltage. Where the negative terminal is, that's our negative voltage. If we measure across from that positive terminal to the negative voltage, we should have about 18 volts. Or oh, 17 volts, because, like I said, these batteries are pretty much dead. Okay, now I've put a wire in where the two terminals meet. So this is our ground, or zero volts, connection. So I'm going to put one clip of my meter onto there. So this should be our positive voltage, and this should be our negative voltage. So, let's see what the meter says. And yep, 8.84 volts. Now when we measure this one, we should get a negative voltage. And indeed we do, negative 8.63. Now I just need to do that with something that can convert mains voltage down to this kind of thing. So let's say we have a transformer that has two output windings, two rectifiers, two smoothing capacitors, two voltage regulators to keep the voltage nice and steady, and we connect the positive of this one to the negative of this one, and we call that ground, or zero volts. Will that work? Well, actually that will, but it's a lot more work than we really need to do. Right, so... Let's give this a test. So, over on the left, I have a homemade transformer. The reason why I'm using this one is because it has isolated outputs and at the voltages that I want. Then, of course, the two rectifiers and two output capacitors. Later on, we'll try this with the voltage regulators added. So, this gives out about 14 volts on each winding. So, I've got a black winding and a white winding. No racial discrimination just so I know which one is which. So I've got the white winding connected to the lower rectifier and the black winding connected to the upper rectifier. So we should have about 20 volts out of the capacitors. Plug this in, see if it works. Okay, yep, yeah, we got about 20 volts on the lower capacitor. Let's test the upper capacitor and Yep, just as I thought. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clip lead back on that capacitor and I'm going to connect the positive of this one up to the negative of that one 
and this is perfectly all right because both of these coils are isolated from each other so we're not going to get any short circuits although we will get twice the voltage across both the capacitors I mean both capacitors are still going to be 20 volts but it's going to be 40 volts from there to there because the capacitors are in series All right, well, we still have some voltage in those capacitors. But I'm going to plug this in, top that up. Yeah, almost 39 volts there. Now, let's connect up a couple of voltage regulators. Right, okay, so I've added a couple of voltage regulators. Let's just make sure they're both in the shot. There we go. So, got a 7812 here, and a 7812 here. And I've also connected capacitors onto their outputs, just to make sure this all goes smoothly. Right, so, I'm going to connect the meter up to the bottom voltage regulator. Make sure I've got my leads around the right way around. A capacitor there, this is another reason why I put those capacitors on, so I can actually connect this easier. Of course, if my lead would stop flopping around, I could actually get this on there. Don't really want to short anything out. Alright, there we go. So I bash my camera with the head for the 50,000th time. Right, so we should get 12 volts out of this one and 12 volts out of that one. Alright, yep. That one's giving us 12 volts. Let's see what the other one's doing. Okay, that's giving us um, about 11.8 volts. That one's a little bit low, but still within tolerance. Right, I sure as hell hope you can see what's going on here because, well, it might be a bit difficult to see. So I've now got both of the voltage regulators connected together and I'm measuring between both of the regulators. I've got the meters positive connected up to the positive of the upper voltage regulator and the meter's negative connected to the negative of the lower voltage regulator and because they're both connected together we should get 20 volts, I mean 24 volts when I plug this in and yeah, indeed we do and we've just made a split rail power supply so, if I take this lead off here try not to short anything out in the process and clip it here which is where our ground is we've got positive voltage in this case 11.8 volts and if I measure the voltage here we have negative voltage so we can make a split rail power supply with just positive voltage regulators. But could we do that with a center tap transformer? Well, no we couldn't. This might just as well be one output coil and this might just as well be another output coil. Why won't this work? Well, if we connect the positive of this one to the po um, negative of that one, we're just going to get a short circuit and something is going to go up in smoke. Let's demonstrate. So. Here I've built up that circuit, got a center tap transformer right here, connected to the rectifiers and the capacitors as shown in the schematic. Now I've got my meter connected to one of the caps, and this transformer puts out about 12 volts between the black wire and the red wire, and another 12 volts between the black wire and the other red wire. So we should get about mm, 16, 17 volts when that's rectified to DC, so let's see what we actually get. Don't try that at home, kids. Is this transformer on? I'm just making sure. Yep, I can feel vibrations when I hold a magnet next to it, so we're good. So we're getting about you know, almost 17 volts on that capacitor. Let's measure this one. Almost 17 volts. Exactly where I expect it to be. So, could we connect, say, this positive to this negative and get a split rail power supply? Well, no, because if we do that we'll get a short circuit through the diodes in the rectifiers. 
as I will now demonstrate. In a kind of power supply where you have dual rails or split rails, whatever you want to call it, there should be no voltage between here and here. Let's just measure that with a multimeter. Let's see exactly what we've got. I've got this on AC volts at the moment. And according to the meter, we've got about 13 volts AC. DC, we've got about 11.6. There is actually a fair amount of current behind that. If I connect these light bulbs, well, I'm going to connect one there. That's what these green clip leads are going to. They're going to these light bulbs here. It's not a very good idea. Alright, you didn't really think I was going to have something go up in smoke. I mean, there's some pretty nice rectifiers there, and I want to use them in future projects, so yeah, I don't want them to go up in smoke just yet. So what we're looking at now is another variation. Would this work? Well, again, no it wouldn't. If we connected the positive of one of these to the negative of the other one, we would still get a short circuit. And if we connected the two negatives together, we would get double the voltage on these capacitors. Right, so here it is built up. Um, let's plug it in and do some stuff. So first, let's see what's across the capacitors. We should have the same voltage as before. If we don't, I'd be very surprised. Let's see this one. We have about 16.9 volts. Exactly where I thought it would be. And this one. Yeah, about 16.9 volts. Now, you may think that it would be okay to connect the negatives together. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this by putting my test leads on one of the capacitors. doesn't really matter which one. I'll just put it on this one here. Get another test lead to short the negatives together. Now, there's no chance of high current flowing, but if I short these two together... We now have 35 volts across each capacitor. Because now we've got basically the 24 volts coming out of the transformer, which has been full wave rectified, and uh, well, that's where we're getting the 34 volts from. We'll check the other capacitor. Let's see what we got across this one. And yeah. You can see it's exactly the same, or at least you would be able to see it if this meter wasn't so glary. I'm trying to find a better position to put this so the camera can actually see it. I only just noticed that. So connecting voltage regulators up to this is out of the question. I mean, yeah, you could have two separate circuits, but if it's something where the negatives or the positives or one of the positives and one of the negatives is connected, yeah, well, you can forget that. I mean, technically you could put a voltage regulator on there, just as long as you watch out that you don't connect the two negatives together. So you could have this powering one circuit and this powering another circuit, just as long as they don't connect the negatives together at any point. But yeah, this is a very bad way of doing it. So if you want to do a proper dual rail power supply, this is what you need to come up with. So, I've got a transformer here with a center tap one rectifier, we only need one, two smoothing capacitors, two voltage regulators. It's good to notice that this one is a positive voltage regulator and this one is a negative voltage regulator. And of course, two smoothing capacitors. And where the middle of the transformer's output coil is, we connect that to our ground rail and everything's good. And here we are. So, as you can see, we now have one less rectifier. Same two capacitors as before. So let's plug this in and see what happens. Alright. A bit of a dodgy connection there, but as you can see, we now have 34 volts across both of the capacitors. And let's just measure each one separately. So this one should be about 16 or 17 volts. And yeah, that's about where I expect it to be. Let's measure this one. Should be about the same. And perfect. We can even connect a rect um, voltage regulator up to this. So 
let's connect up the voltage regulators. Okay, so the two rectifiers and rectifiers voltage regulators are connected. So on the top we have a 7812 and on the bottom we have a 7912. Now I'm going to connect my meter across both of them, so connect my meter's negative to the 7912's output and the red lead to the 78's output. Let's power this up and we should have 24 volts across both regulators. What do we actually have? 11.8 because I believe I've connected one of these to the wrong pin. Yes, we were only measuring one regulator. Let's try that again. Right. Okay, 23.9 volts. Well, that's close enough. Let's see what our lower regulator's doing. 12 volts. Right on the money. Let's see what our upper regulator's doing. I've probably got these leads the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. 11.8. That's a little bit low, but still within spec. And we also have a center ground. So there's no chance of shorting something out when we connect them both together because, well, they're already connected together. Anyway, I'm getting all the parts ready now for building the power supply for my amplifier and I think this video is getting a bit long already, so yeah. Gonna see you in part two. Well, I'll see you in part two, but you'll see me. Anyway, until next time, goodbye.